we're in the sports mode and woo! Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and in today's we're going to be going over the all new BMW 330i. Before we get into this video though, a huge shout out and thank you to the BMW of Pleasant Grove, Utah for giving me some time with this 330i. I'm going to include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And by the way, they've got quite a few of these in stock right now. And so something that I would like to mention in this video is they do have a lease special going on and the only reason that the BMW of Pleasant Grove is able to offer this lease special is because unlike other BMW dealers, they do not charge markups on their vehicles. Vehicles. So if you're interested in one, like I said, link to them in the description down below. Just make sure to ask for Brendan. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged two liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 24 around town and then 33 on the highway with power outputs being 255 horsepower and then 295 pound feet of torque. Now, before we go over the front end, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting off with the hood, you can see super distinctive lines there on either side. And then you've got the BMW logo in the center and this blue color looks so cool. And then coming down below, you guys can see really cool daytime running lights there with the LED headlamps. And then yes, this doesn't have the massive front grille that like the BMW M3 has. So it just looks a little bit more normal in my opinion. I love all the blacked out accenting on the grille as well. And if blue's not your thing and you want to be more of a normie, they got black, they got white, they, they got all the colors, but like this, this is the color to get. You want something bright. And yeah, putting it all together, the 3 Series just looks so good. Coming around the side here, tire wheel setup is 225, 40, 19 in the front and over in the rear as well. And what you notice with this car is the wheels are all blacked out, which looks really cool. And then you got the red brake caliper, which actually contrasts very nicely to the blue paint. We've got these cool blacked out mirrors and then notice the trimmer on the windows is all blacked out, but then the door handles are body painted. And then taking a look at the side of the 3 Series, again, it's pretty simplistic with the design and I think that it just works. So here's our key fob. We have our unlock function, our lock function, the opening here for the trunk and nothing there on the back. So <laughs> just pop this open. And then popping inside, something that's pretty impressive with the 3 Series is it's actually relatively large from a storage space perspective in the trunk. Obviously this isn't a huge sedan, so don't expect that you can fit a boat back here, but you can fit quite a bit. And then when you're all done, just plop. And then popping over to the rear, I love the taillights here on the new 3 Series. Those look so cool while they're illuminated. And then we've got this little black spoiler here at the top. And then you can see here with the badges, you got like your 330i badge, the BMW badge, and then your X-Drive badge as well. Parking sensors on the bottom portion. And then look at the exhaust tips and the diffuser. Pretty neat. And yeah, I mean, all together, just such a good looking car with the blue and everything. Now with the door panel in the rear, you guys can see we've got really nice padding here and then down below you're going to rest your arm. Pretty normal setup with the window control and the door handle. I do like the speakers here for the Harman Kardon sound system. Those look nice. We've got some nice stitching here in the leather seats. Notice they're perforated all down the center portion. Legroom here in the back is fantastic. We got a little storage pocket right there. And then we've got some vents here in the center with our own climate zone in the back and then some USBs. And then headroom's also solid back here. And of course, we got a cup holder armrest. There we go. Now with the front door panel, you can see again, same nice padding here. And then we've got the memory seat functionality here with all of the window controls, mirror adjustment, the mirrors do power fold in, and then more speaker action with the Harman Kardon sound system. And then you can see we do have blind spot monitoring in the mirrors on top of that. Now with the front seat, notice the contrasted stitching, and then you can see perforated all down the center portion of the seat and then we've got all of our power adjustments here on the side and then we got a little m logo pretty cool pedal layout here at the bottom and notice another m logo bmw's going hard with that right now and then we've got all of our light controls right here and then i love the look of the vent Taking a look at the steering wheel, really nice leather trim all around. We've got the stitching in the center with another M logo. Heated steering wheel button on the steering wheel. We got some controls for like your phone controls, volume controls, you know, all the normal stuff. Paddle shifters here on the back for the eight speed automatic. And then I love how the airbag cover has some nice stitching on it. 
cruise control there, and then we have our normal stocks like your turn signal stock and then your windshield wiper stock. Now with the center gauge cluster, you guys can see this has the new hyper screen, which looks so cool uh, with the overall setup. Now when I change the drive modes, this is where it gets real fancy. So that is the Eco Pro mode. And then we've got the comfort mode and then we have the sport mode. And I like how it gets like red and aggressive in sport. Now within each drive mode, we actually have more drive modes. You can see we've got a sport individual and then a regular sport. Comfort just has comfort. And then Eco Pro also has an individual mode as well. Now in reverse, we do have a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. Uh, resolution is really solid with the camera and that's for your like parking sensors. That's what that view is for. Now, as for the rest of the infotainment screen, we have a shortcut bar here on the side, um, which definitely helps out with overall usability. And when it comes to response time of the screen, it does take a second for some of the menus to load up, but it's pretty solid um, overall. And I like how there's like a bunch of these like menus here in the center. Some people might get overwhelmed, but I just like having an individual tab for everything. So it's like Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, just right there. And it's like, I can scroll down. It's like, oh, I wanna do the Wi-Fi stuff, messages. Like, it's just really straightforward. And so I'd say one of the best infotainment systems out there. And then you've got the climate control menu that's easy to access. Notice you've got the heated seats here uh, with that as well. So there isn't physical buttons for the heated seats now, but again, having that at the bottom where it just pulls up right away, it's, it's easy enough to use. So we've got nice padding here on the dash, and then you can see with the vent trim how that kind of connects here. And I like this trim here on the dash as well. And by the way, fit and finish here is really solid. Got a little volume control down below with some more analog controls for the radio and then, you know, some stuff for the climate. You've got this tab which matches the trim on the dash, and this covers the wireless phone charging pad and then the cup holders as well. Now, this is an analog control for the infotainment system if you don't want to use the touchscreen functionality. And it's really cool that BMW offers this so that, you know, for those of you that don't want to be reaching over and using the touchscreen while you're driving, you can just do the style that's a little bit more precise while you're on the move. And then this is the shifter. Um, pretty easy to use, honestly, with the functionality. And then we've got like your spill control here, parking sensors, your auto stop start. I like the engine stop start. That's pretty neat looking. Your drive modes, your auto hold, and then your parking brake. And then taking a look at the center console here, it has some USBs in there and solid storage space overall and nice padding there on the top. And then with the glove box, nicely felt lined. Now up top here, we do have our control for the sunroof. As you can see, it's not quite a panoramic, but it's bigger than a normal sunroof and the sunshade is automated, which is also neat. So here's our window sticker for the ultimate driving machine. And uh, first off, you guys can see the base price, 44330 And then over here at the standard equipment section, if you wanna read all that, big thing with the warranty is for your 50,000 mile new vehicle warranty, right? And then this has quite a few options added to it, as you can see. After all options on this particular one, stickers for $54,510. Let's see how the three series drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility of the hood, both of the mirrors, which do have blind spot monitoring, and then throughout the rest of the rear. And let's set off. Setting off in the 330i. Now, I have driven the new M340i, and so I'll make some comparisons between the cars because I'm sure that some of you are going to wonder if you should spend the uh, extra money that you have to spend on an M340i because I'm pretty sure that like the base price on the M340i is pretty much what this costs fully loaded. So that's obviously an interesting question to answer. First off, these seats are really comfortable. Um, I love the look of them, but they're also just you know, really comfortable to sit in. Transmission super responsive in normal BMW fashion. And we're going to put the tripod down now rather than later. Yeah, tons of torque out of the engine. I feel like BMW just underrates all of their powertrains because they're like, eh, 250 horsepower. And it's like, yeah, this feels more like 300 something. Let's be real here, BMW. What's actually happening under the hood? Um, suspension's really compliant. And I guess another good comparison would be like the C-Class 2, the new one. Love the feeling of the steering wheel. It's definitely has like a, kind of like a lightweight, nimble feel. Let's pop into the Eco Pro mode and see how that feels. So most um, modern cars are now equipped with uh, mild hybrid systems. It seems like if they're not full on hybrid <laughs> at this point, and so that's, that's the cool thing about eco modes in today's world is you actually get like a, a real benefit other than just having like eco put on your screen. But 
super smooth. Definitely feels less responsive out of the throttle. Like I have to put my foot into it a little bit more with this mode. Um, suspension overall, I feel like it's pretty compliant. We'll pop back into the comfort mode now. It's just a good daily driver. Yeah, they've done, BMW's done a good job with making this feel like a solid luxury car. And compared to the C-Class, um, here's what I have to say is the C-Class might be slightly more comfortable with the suspension, slightly, but it's also like feels way bigger than this. Um, this still still has like a small like sporty feel to it whereas the C-Class just kind of feels more like a boat but that's just what Mercedes has been doing well most automakers right they make their cars bigger but especially the new Mercedes they're pretty pretty enormous at this point point. and steering on this is way better this actually has like some level of steering feel and engagement we're in the sport mode and woo <laughs> Gotta, gotta love that acceleration again hooks right up because x drive right so even though it's cold and wet today still hooking up yeah, and going over that a little bit quicker really compliant gear shifts are so quick i mean look at that just instant and so i mean this already feels more powerful than what the power suggests but the transmission just makes it feel so much sportier too so i'll hold down the plus paddle that'll put it back into automatic we'll put it back into comfort now gotta relax a little bit here so um something things actually i want to keep it in sport mode because when we go over the little roundabout that'll be fun to see how it performs but uh anyways summing things up i love how this looks um and you know if you're not a fan of the new m3 styling with the huge grill then right this has a more normal uh, grill to it so you've got that big benefit and this is just a really good car um it's a comfortable daily driver it's got more than enough power, you know, from, you know, like an, a passing power perspective and all that. And then it also is, it's economical. It gets good fuel economy, right? It's not a huge, you know, engine. And so you can still get decent fuel economy. I mean, this doesn't even have a full tank and it's showing me over 400 miles of driving range. So that is pretty impressive. And then it's also fun to drive. And I don't think you can say the same thing for like an A4 <laughs> or the new C-Class because they're okay but this actually again it's got bmw handling dynamics like look at this it's just like the steering feel the handling everything it, it's the best of everything you get like a very nice luxury car experience and then you also get razor sharp handling and it, it's really good so yeah i think that out of the new audi a4 and the c-class i would pick this and then in terms of the m340i if you want the extra power, then yeah, um, go for that. But I feel like this is just enough for like a daily commute. And, you know, I'm not saying the M340i is not worth it, but like this is so much less expensive than the M340i that I drove. Sorry, Brandon, I love your car, but this is so much less expensive that I kind of lean towards this for most uh, buyers. I think this is probably gonna be the route to go. That's gonna sum things up with our video on this 330i. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the BMW of Pleasant Grove, Utah for giving me some time with this car. Check out the intro in the description down below. As for Brendan, I'll see ya.